First, let's prepare our meat. I have two two and a half pound pork shoulders on pork shoulders here, but you can also use pork leg. The important thing is that it's a piece of pork with a thick layer of fat and lots of marbling. Those are the pieces that end up falling apart after long cooking times. Cut off most of the thick layers of fat because we won't be able to skim the fat off the sauce later and it will end up tasting too oily. Really take your time to remove all the fat. And then cut the pork into big thick chunks and cut off thick layers of fat off the chunks if necessary. Then add the cubed pork into a large bowl where it will be able to marinate later so you need enough space still left in the bowl to add the marinade too. Then set the bowl aside. Look how much fat I removed. This is a pound and a half which is why I got five pounds of pork to begin with so I'd end up with three and a half to four pounds of actual pork for the cochinita pibil. Next up let's make the marinade. For that, you will need about eight to 10 oranges. Cut them in half and press out the juice. We need one cup of freshly squeezed orange juice. You can of course use store-bought juice, but trust me, freshly squeezed tastes so much better. Then add an acid to your orange juice. Some people like to add lime juice, others white vinegar. My personal favorite is apple cider vinegar because it gives it a really, really special flavor. To season the marinade, we will add three to four cloves of finely chopped garlic and a bunch of spices. Two teaspoons sea salt, half a teaspoon freshly cracked black pepper, half a teaspoon cumin, half a teaspoon cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon clove. Then give this all a quick whisk and now comes the most important ingredient and what makes your cochinita pibil authentic. Anato or achiote paste. In the Nahuatl language, achiotl means red dye or red paint and refers to a plant which has red seeds with which the paste is made. It has an indescribable flavor, but it is somewhat earthy, smoky, peppery, sweet, and spicy. Ah, oh, I can't describe it. It's delicious and absolutely necessary. Now, the smartest thing to do is just add all the ingredients to a blender because it's much faster to mix it together than by hand, but only if the jug of your blender is made of glass. My blender has a plastic jug, so I prefer to just patiently whisk and press and keep whisking until it's all combined so my jug doesn't get stained red. Once your marinade is well mixed together and no big clumps of achiote paste are left in it, pour it over your pork chunks and use some tongs to ensure all pieces are well covered. Then seal your bowl airtight with a piece of cling film and place it in the refrigerator for at least two hours, but better overnight and up to 24 hours. In the meantime, prepare the onion salsa that tastes amazing on top of cochinita pibil tacos. For that, you will need to peel two small or one large red onion and slice it very, very thinly. Then add the sliced onion to a sealable jar or bowl. Then cut an habanero chili into thin slices. If you are a contact lens wearer like I am, I recommend not touching anything but the stem of the chili. It's super spicy and no matter how often you wash your hands, your eyes will still burn. Then add the sliced habanero to the sliced onions and season the onions with two tablespoons of lime juice, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, half a tablespoon of olive oil and sea salt and pepper. Then use some tongs to mix it all super well together, seal the container and place it in the fridge until it's time to serve your tacos. Now to cook the stew, you have several options. The traditional way is to wrap it in banana leaves and cook it in a hole in the earth, a peep. Hence the dish's name, pibil. Basically an earth oven, but since most of us don't have that, we'll resort to either the pressure cooker, slow cooker, or Dutch oven. The slow cooker will take 10 hours on low, the Dutch oven about four hours at 325 Fahrenheit, and the pressure cooker 90 minutes on high. I'm choosing my pressure cooker today, and this is how I handle the banana leaf situation. Banana leaves aren't absolutely essential, but they do give the dish a really nice, slightly more earthy flavor. So if you can get your hands on them, definitely use them. 
Since we don't have to worry about dirt seeping into the stew from an earth oven, we don't need to tightly wrap the meat in the leaves and instead can make it easier and just add a piece to the bottom of the pot. Then add some water to make sure it doesn't burn to the bottom, only a third of a cup or so and let it soak and get really wet. Then we add the marinated pork on top and then we place another piece of banana leaf on top of the stew and press down on it. Seal your pressure cooker and then set it to 90 minutes on high. Now all we do is wait for the cooker to do its magic and then we also wait for natural pressure release. Once the safety pin dropped, it's time to open the pot, remove the top banana leaf with some tongs and discard it. It's not edible. And then use two forks to pull the meat apart. If it's easier for you, you can also transfer the meat into a baking dish to pull apart there. Now this is your stew and you can eat it whichever way you want, but the most popular in Mexico is in tortillas as tacos de cochinita, topped with some of those pickled onions and freshly chopped cilantro. The taste is unbelievably good. I really hope you give this recipe a try.